Hi, this is Dr. Kat Fleece again from Central New Mexico Community College. In this video D of the heart, we will focus on blood flow. We've already talked quite a bit about blood flow through the heart, but we really need to put it all together in a nice package. Uh, blood flow through the heart is extremely important for you to understand, not just for this class, but for your future career as well. So with the help of this image, it's really easy to see that the right side of the heart is oxygen poor, while the, right, the left side of the heart is oxygen rich. So both the right atrium and right ventricle have oxygen poor blood in them, while the left um, chambers have oxygen rich blood in them. I prefer to use the terms oxygen poor and oxygen rich because as we will see soon, blood is never without oxygen. So I do not prefer or I do not care to use deoxygenated uh, blood versus oxygenated blood. Um, certainly not deoxygenated blood. I prefer to use oxygen poor versus oxygen rich. The other thing to notice is that there are certain parts of the heart that contribute to the pulmonary circuits or the, and the pulmonary circulation. So blood that um, leaves the heart to go to the left and the right lungs arises from the right ventricle. Blood that leaves the lungs to return to the heart arrives at the left atrium. On the other hand, the systemic circuit, which includes the systemic circulation, is going to consist of blood that leaves the left ventricle to enter into the aorta, which carries it to all the tissues in the body except for the lungs. Gas exchange occurs there, and then that oxygen-poor blood is returned via the inferior and superior vena cava into the right atrium. So we have a so-called pulmonary circuit and we have a, a systemic circuit. With the help now of this diagram, we will very carefully review the flow of blood in the heart. Realize that you can easily practice yourself by making a very simple diagram of the heart, <clears throat> excuse me, that looks like this. I just draw literally a heart like that and I divide it up into its four chambers making the atria smaller than, I'm sorry, the left atrium, than the ventricles. And then you can draw the aorta arising from the left ventricle, the right ventricle giving rise to the pulmonary trunk, etc, etc. You would draw bigger but really, it's easy to do that way. I typically teach it that way in my face-to-face -face class if I have time. So let's come back to our figure here, and I'm just going to use the, the red cursor. We'll start with the left ventricle, which we see over here, easy to recognize in this picture of the internal anatomy of the heart because of the thickness of the myocardium. <clears throat> From here, the blood will then, via the aortic semilunar valves, enter into the aorta. From the aorta, the blood makes it to our arms and our head, as well as throughout the thorax, throughout the abdomen, and eventually into our lower limbs. Actually, we see that descending aorta peeking out from behind the heart here. So it literally penetrates the diaphragm to make it into the abdomen and eventually in the pelvis area it'll split into two major branches to feed the lower limbs. Eventually the oxygen poor blood needs to be returned to the heart that um, was sent to all the tissues except for the lungs and this happens via the inferior vena cava which enters into our right atrium as well as the superior vena cava, which returns the blood from the, the regions of the heart that lie superior to the, heart, to the heart. So both the inferior vena cava and superior vena cava dump their blood into the um, right atrium. 
I'm going to add here that there is actually one more vessel that dumps its blood into the right atrium. And I'm just going to draw um, a little star here, and that is the coronary sinus dumps its blood into the right atrium as well. Don't forget that. So all of this oxygen poor blood starts to collect in the right atrium and from the right atrium the blood will now need to pass through our right atrioventricular valve which we prefer to call the tricuspid valve to then make it into our right ventricle. From the right ventricle the blood gets ejected as the right ventricle squeezes through the pulmonary semilunar valves into the pulmonary trunk. A trunk is always a short vessel that then immediately splits to give rise to the pulmonary arteries that go to the left and the right lungs. In the left and the right lung, gas exchange occurs again, this time in the opposite direction than how it occurred in the tissues. In our lungs, the blood that was brought in by the pulmonary arteries the lungs will pick up the carbon dioxide waste and supply the blood with fresh oxygen. So this freshly oxygenated or oxygen-rich blood will now return via the pulmonary veins on, from either lung into our left atrium. Remember, atria always collects blood, and remember the left side of the heart is completely oxygen-rich. So it makes sense for the oxygen-rich blood from the left and the right pulmonary veins to return to the left atrium. From the left atrium through the mitral valve or the bicuspid valve, the blood enters the very thickly walled left ventricle and then once again the left ventricle through the aortic semilunar valve pushes the blood into the aorta. Now a word of caution you guys. Notice that I started with the left ventricle and then eventually we got to the right ventricle. It's just really pretty much the only way we can explain how the blood flows through the heart. Um, aside from the fact that we could have started with the right ventricle or even the right atrium or even the aorta. It doesn't matter where you start. But this is the following is something really important for, it, for you to remember. When the heart squeezes from the bottom upward, the blood is pushed into both the pulmonary trunk and the aorta at the same time. So when the heart contracts, it contracts both those ventricles after the aorta have contracted. We'll learn how that all works. But both ventricles contract simultaneously. The blood enters into its arteries simultaneously. Keep that in mind. And so this wraps up our short video on blood flow.